So a couple of weeks ago, I made a video where I did a dry pour slab for my golf hitting area. And I didn't do a real good job on that, on that particular video because, well, I just kind of screwed up and I didn't show all the different steps. Well, this week I'm going to do a second dry pour project. This time I'm going to videotape it right. I'm going to show you every step that I take all the way through the process so that you don't have any questions or, or, or that I leave any mystery out there. So let me show you what the project is going to be this time. It's going to be a much smaller project. I'm going to use lessons that I learned from my last project. Uh, I'm very happy with the first project that I did, but uh, this one I think I can do just a little bit better, and I'm going to talk you through those as I go through the project. Let me show you what I'll be doing today. So I explained in my previous video that I had had a pool put in a couple of years ago and some of the things that weren't done they put in this nice deck area here nice beautiful deck area but at the doors as you walk out they didn't put a step down here so what I did again this is was temp temporary and that was just I just put down some pavers you see they're all getting lopsided and moldy and nasty and everything so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, a little slab here, a little step area. It's going to be roughly three feet uh, deep by about right around four feet across. One of the things I want to do is I want to try to see if I can fit it under that spout where the, where the gutter drains so I don't have that uh, draining and digging a hole right next to my slab. So first thing I got to do, obviously, is take out these pavers and uh, prepare the ground for the slab. Okay, I'm back. So first step, as I said, is removal of all this current stuff we have here, all these pavers, and get some mat out of here. I'll pressure wash that a bit. These pavers kind of sunk down been down for about almost three years now. Set those over here out of the side. Pop to the side for now. And then this termite bait station we have these about every six feet all around the house I already talked to the bug guy he's gonna reposition these he just checked them the other day next thing I have to do loosen everything up so I can come back with my tamper make it all nice and even. Okay, step one done. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is put together the frame for our slab. But before I do that, I wanna go over real quickly the list of tools you're gonna to need for this entire job. You're gonna want some good gloves, you don't want to be messing around with concrete mix, cement mix with your bare skin exposed. It's just not good. It can cause burning. Um, going to need some wood screws. Going to need a good drill. So you see I've got a, got a uh, medium sized hammer. Small hammer will do. I have a level, a tamper. I have an extra board that's longer than the other boards. That's going to be used for my screeding process. I uh, have a shovel. I'm also going to be using an edging tool that you'll see when I get to that, that part. And you need a paint roller with, I just use about a 3 8 inch nap. And you'll see why in a bit. So now let's go back inside to the, the pool area here. And we're going to do some, put together my frame. Now the reason I'm doing it on the lanai area instead of out by the pool is because the pool is not level it's everything slants away from the pool 
this this here the the lanai portion that was put in when the house was originally built it's a little more level it does have a little slope going down away from the house uh, for draining purposes but it's not as dramatic as around the pool so we're going to do this here it's the levelest area i've got so i've got pre-cut and pre-built molds here just going to get our happy little drill I always like to get the get the screw started a little bit. Get this as square as possible. Doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but all depends on how square you want your slab to be. Alright, that one tighten up real nice. Now if you notice here, my frame only has three sides to it. That's because I'm going to butt this up right up against the slab for the pool. Small project like this, I don't really need to have an expansion barrier or anything like that. Okay, so we got a frame good to go. One other thing you need is a measuring tape. Make sure you have a measuring tape because when we put this, when I put this down, I'm going to want to make sure that the dimensions from here to here are matched up down there when that's butted up against the the existing concrete otherwise it could go like that or that so anyways here we go on to okay so we got our frame done we're gonna drop it now I have not poured in the dirt, filled this in, and tamped it down yet because I wanted to see how the frame fits so I can see where I need to make adjustments here and there. One of the problems I already see is that I'm going to have to lift this up to here because the concrete that's poured in there, there's a little lip down there and this board's got to sit right up against that. That's going to be okay because I'm going to want a little slope coming this way for drainage. Marry this side up here and I want to take this I want to bring this a little bit further over because I want it past the edge of the door so I'm just gonna move my frame get my shovel and span this out a little bit Just loosening everything up. I don't necessarily need to dig anything up. I want to loosen this and then pull out all the vegetation. Don't want any of that under my concrete. Now I'm going to slide this over, check over there, make sure I'm still under the spout. And it looks good. So, next, grab my level. And I want to make sure mostly that this is level from this way to this way. I got a suspicion that that side will need to come up. So take our dirt, move it over to this side a bit. Almost. A little bit higher. Okay, that's level. 
Now we want to make sure it's got a little bit of a slope. A little bit more than I probably want. Let's see. Yeah, that's a bit much. The bubble is all the way that way. So, what we're going to do is going to raise this a little bit. I'm going to raise this a little bit. Okay. Get the bubble, just the edge of the bubble, past the line. There we go. Okay, so the next thing I want to check is I want to check. There should be about 46 inches, I believe, is what I cut it. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Let's start here. Okay. Yep, 46 inches. Forty-six inches exact. Okay, so those dimensions are good now. Okay, so we got forty-six inches at both ends, forty-six inches wide. I've got it butted up against the existing, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add some dirt because this isn't this isn't the depth I want it. Back that down a little bit. And we're gonna add some dirt, spread it around in here because that right now is lower than the bottom of the boards. I bought topsoil because strangely enough, I live in Florida. You would think sand would be plentiful and sand would be cheap, but topsoil is actually cheaper than sand by a long shot. Strange. Now I know somebody out there in YouTube world is going to mention, hey, when you talked about the tools you needed, you didn't mention the garden rake. No, I didn't. I forgot. My apologies. But I'm going to spread this out as good as I can. Uh, the funny thing about topsoil in Florida is it is so hot here that topsoil turns to sand within just a couple of days. So I'm not real worried about that. And using topsoil should help encourage vegetation, the grass, to grow up around this. I'm putting it in a little deeper than you might think I need. And the reason for that is because when I use the tamper, it's going to get all knocked down. I'm shooting for three inch thickness around this whole thing. Um, I don't really need any more than two inches. So, not real concerned about that. Get this as level as possible. as close to three inches around this mold as possible or this frame okay should be good now the next step is the tamper this thing is magic love the tamper gets everything nice and flat gotta make sure I don't push that board out and 
I'm gonna tamp this whole thing and get it nice and flat. Holding my feet up against the board when I tamp by the board. So it doesn't push it. You really don't, as you can see, I'm not smashing this thing down in. Just using the weight of it. This thing's really heavy. You can pick one up at Harbor Freight. I think I paid somewhere 20, I don't know, 25 bucks, somewhere around there. We got everything pretty level. Okay. So, you may notice around the edge over here, it's got some dirt that came out, and that's fine. Uh, once I get this thing poured and it's been wet down and had time to cure, I'm going to, when I pull the mold out, I'm going to fill that all in with topsoil and uh, some pieces of, sh of sod. But this should be ready to go now for the, for the pouring of the concrete, the dry pour. So let's do that next. Clean some of this stuff out of the way. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I made a slight modification. I, I noticed that the boards here, because right here, you've got about four inches and then there's a lip and then it goes down another two and a half to three inches because that's where the footer was for the patio for the pool area so because of this lip this board was sitting up is high and a little bit higher actually than this that would make it impossible for me to screed it nice and carefully up towards the top and you'll see what i mean when i do the screeding uh, you got to be able to move that make that nice and smooth so i went ahead and i cut little notches in the ends of these boards here both ends so I could push it up against that and this end is a little lower than the patio which is good I kind of prefer it to be a little lower I went ahead and I re-leveled now I'm going to need to put a little bit more dirt in these ends here to plug those holes and uh, and then we'll start doing the concrete all right now time for the dry pour Oop, I forgot my gloves. Ooh, that's okay. Okay, this is the crucial part that I left out in my last video. The screening. So we want to get that up as far as we can. And then we take our screening board, which is a board longer than our project. Start at the very top. We're just going to go back and forth like this. And we're going to pull it forward. What this is going to do is it's going to move all the cream to the top and all the aggregate to the bottom. Not really the bottom, but down below.
And as I'm doing this, I'll go ahead and clean that off. And then I'll spray off later. As you move the board forward like this, you're going to find holes. Just go ahead and fill those holes in. I'm going to go back over it. Go too fast, you have a lot of holes. <laughs> Time for some more concrete mix. Make sure this is piled higher in your frame. Bad spot over there. So, just so you know, I did a concrete calculator online, and all of the concrete calculators that I tried told me that this project with this size was going to be about seven bags. I've used five so far, <coughs> and I did the calculator, the calculations at three inches thick. So I don't know why they all overdo it. But they do. Okay, so we got the skating done. Next thing we're going to do is going to take the paint roller to it. Let's 
gives it a nice sandy finish. So it's like it's like it's got non-skid on it. So it won't be slippery. I learned from the last job I did that you want to go all the same direction to make it be as uniform as possible. You see it's getting it making it a little bit gritty and that's good. I want grit on the outside. One thing I did on my last project that worked out super good is I tapped the sides of this just lightly with a hammer and that helped the sides feeling really good I didn't have any I had nice smooth sides now the reason I'm using a hammer is because the guy that I learned this from on YouTube Cajun Country Living, he uses a hand, um, electric hand sander on the edge of the wood, and that works really well too. Strangely enough, I can't find where I put my hand sand, sander, so I tried this, and it worked really well. Don't want to overdo it though. Okay, time for the edger. What did I do with the edger? Okay, last time I did a horrible job in attempting this old edger thing. I still really suck at this. bad at all. Now, let's go back over this, like so. We have nice edges now. Now I'm not going uniform now, but oh well, I got nice edges. Sweet. It's smooth and pretty. Look at that. Now, I can go ahead and do my first watering, which is actually a misting. Yay! And now what we're gonna do at this point, we're gonna put our hose on mist, and we're gonna do a light misting. Just enough to get it to change colors a little bit. And that should do it right there. So all we need to do, take note of the time, come out and do that in another hour. 
So, we'll be out in another hour to do another misting, another light misting, let that top get hardened a little bit. There you have it. So there's another dry pour method. Um, I'll film some more after uh, I've done all the waterings and stuff, and then when I take off the frame to do the big reveal. For now, I'm gonna go rinse off, change my clothes, and jump into my pool. This was a hot job. Okay, it's been almost 24 hours. We're gonna go ahead and pull this off. See what it looks like. That looks nice. Take a look at this. You'll see it's moist all the way down. I got nice edges on it. Nice and slick across the sides. See those sides turned out pretty nice. Tapping it with a hammer. Got that aggregate down there. See where it butted up there against the existing lip. When we look at this side, here's that existing lip down here. And that's married up to it just fine. So there you have it. Another successful dry pour. I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna let this cure for another day and put the Put down a nice little mat. Problem solved. Dirty, nasty looking area. Just clean up this excess concrete here. Put some topsoil around here and then put in some sod. Perfect little slab. Easy job. Thanks for watching.